everything all right the weapon may be formed but i know that it will not prosper no surrounded on all sides but my god has already won the fight you traded joy joy for my pain you pulled my life out of the grave i will lay down all sorrow and shame raise up my voice
Good morning, ATC. Welcome to Appleton North High School. Welcome to our groundbreaking service. Today is going to be a historic day for ATC. Uh, first of all, if you're new here at the church, uh, we abbreviate Apostolic Truth Church as ATC. We are a vibrant, multi-generational, spirit-filled Christian community of believers, and we would love for you to be a part of our church if you don't have a church home. Uh, we have ministries available for you uh, from teens and kids to men, women, singles, seniors, the whole family. In addition to that, we have life groups available for your whole family, and we would love to be a part of the way that you do life. Over 30 years ago, ATC purchased this plot of land with hopes and desires and prayers and vision to one day build a church home right here to meet the needs of our Appleton community and to serve the city of Appleton. At the time, it seemed like a big coat to wear because our property on Casting Court was even too big for the church congregation. But ATC continued to grow. Seven years ago, we, we went to two services on a Sunday morning because we couldn't all fit. And now it's time to see that vision come to life. Now we are celebrating the fact that we're breaking ground today and we are breaking ground on the area, the land that we have prayed for for three decades. In today's service, you're gonna hear worship music, you're gonna hear construction project updates, but you're also gonna hear an encouraging word from Pastor Soto. After today's service, we wanna tell you what our groundbreaking ceremony is gonna look like. Today's service is gonna be about an hour long, and right after the service, we wanna encourage you to leave Appleton North High School and go right to the Glory Lane property. Bring your boots, bring some shoes that you don't mind getting dirty because we're gonna be right on the property. You can take a couple routes to get to the Glory Lane property, either JJ or Ashbury Drive. Don't worry, it's not a far drive. We do wanna encourage you to leave the spaces near the entrance for our elders so that they have less distance to walk. Look for the large sign and listen for the music. At the ceremony, Pastor Soto is going to be speaking for a little bit, uh, but then also give a few minutes for some of our very important guests to speak as well. But we do want to encourage you, take pictures with your family. Take pictures because this is going to be a historic day for Apostolic Truth Church. Now we're going back into a time of worship, and so we want to encourage you, be a part of the service, sing loudly. Let's have a great service together. Come on, put your hands together. I'll praise in the valley, praise on the mountain. I'll praise when I'm sure, praise when I'm down. It's when I'm numbered. Praise is the water, my enemies drowned it. Here we go. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord of oh, my soul. Come on. Praise the Lord of oh, my soul. I'll praise when I feel it. Praise when I don't. I'll praise because I know that you're still in control. Oh, yes. My praise is a weapon, it's more than a sound. My praise is a shout that pretends it go down. Here we go. As long as I sing it out.
praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. Sing it out. I praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Come on. I praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true. Praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. Praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater. I'll praise, praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, I'll praise, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater. Turn into praise, shape of despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in vain. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. Here we go. All of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. I will sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in vain. I will dance out in Praise him right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we lift you up in all your praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. I love you. For your mercy never fails me, oh my days, I've been held in your hand, from the moment that I wake up, until I lay my head, I will 
will see of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will see close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God.
know what you're thinking and don't worry our sanctuary is going to be bigger than this <laughs> today is a special day it's the culmination of prayer faith and sacrifice and we are so grateful that we can share this moment together as we prepare to break ground on our new property on glory lane I'm just still trying, I'm just pinching myself. Are we here? Is this really happening? Well, this is really happening. And we want to give you some updates that are related to our project. And it is my great privilege to uh, bring to this um, platform today our building coordinator, Sam El Sadi. He has been a true gem and a blessing to this church, leading the charge to get us to our new facility. Would you help me welcome Sam El Sadi? I can't believe it. Do you believe it? It's a, this is unbelievable. So It's so great. Um, I'm going to take you on a little journey. Is that okay? A little journey on this project. I'm going to go five and a half years ago, and that's when we started planning for this new building. So I've got a little project timeline that Seth put together for me. And um, I'm going to have to look this way because I can kind of see it back there, but I can definitely see it here. 
So new campus planning team, January of 2019, five and a half years ago, we put that together. It was CJ and Brianna, they um, coordinated this effort. What we did was we had a nine, we formed a nine member team, all ATC. Um, we evaluated all the current ministries. So we talked to all the directors, all the pastors. We, we gathered all this information about what are we doing? What's our mission? What's our future look like? It was just all conceptual stuff, right? Um, we looked at all of our spaces. Um, Eric Graper measured every room in our building, right? We have every dimension of every room in our present building. We uh, looked at all the demographics from the kids through the guardians and everybody in between and said, what do they need? What do they want? What, what, how can we serve all the demographics, right? And we established from that all our future needs. We did that for six months. We met, we, we planned, we gathered all the information. And from there, we went on in July of 2019 to form our new campus design team. That was a five-member team. Seth, Evelyn, Pastor, Heather, and myself. And we took all of the information that we gathered from the, des from the planning team and we started designing. I mean, we sat in a room, we had, I uh, had cutouts, just square cutouts in different dimensions and size. We started saying, okay, if this is a admin building, if this is an education wing, if this is our lobby, and then what do we want this to look like? We use the input from the new campus planning team to establish design direction, right? We got all the feel. We looked at pictures of buildings. We, we did everything we did. We, so we took everything that we, all the data we gathered and all the sizes of like projecting. So like we have our sanctuary can seat this many people. How many do we need the new one to seat? We have this many classrooms. How many do we need? What sizes? Um, how do we serve, you know, our life groups? How do we serve our guardians? How do we do all this? And where do we put them? And how does it relate? And so we went through all that conceptual work. And then in October of 2019, we went to Birmingham, Alabama to a company called Live Design. And we did a two-day, believe, believe it or not, a two-day live design session. And on the end of the second day, our building was there. It's incredible, two days, right? And that building, if I showed you, I should have put pictures up for you of the original design and you look at today's design and it's phenomenal how it's the same. It's the same building. We made changes, we, we tw you know, but two days of planning work and that building all came together. That's a miracle, that's a miracle right there. So um, we utilized all the previous design work we did and we came up with our conceptual designs. And then we were getting ready to go into our, our campaign and guess what happened? You guys remember what happened? Yeah, COVID, right? The big, the big bad COVID hit. And then we had some time. So we said, well, you know what? We haven't planned out like future. And how does that relate to our conceptual design? Like how do we expand? How do we, once we start growing, what do we do? Well, we want a rec center. How are we going to connect that? Then do we have to change our conceptual designs to meet the needs of the new design? And actually, prior to, prior to COVID, we had already started talking to everybody. We were starting our campaign up. We were rolling it out, and we had all this great information from all of you. Uh, one of the big ones was, you know, there's no, it's, the, the front doors are a long way from the drop-off. There's no covered walkway. There's no carport, you know. So we, we went back to live design virtually during COVID, Pastor and I, and we replant, we planned all of our future, expanding the admin building, expanding the education, expanding the worship center, expanding the lobby, building a rec center. We, we did all that, and we said, how do we got to, you know, do this, and then we also redesign the education wing to serve, if we want to in the future, as a child care center, uh, you know, a daycare center for up to 99 children. So that is a source of potential revenue and a potential ministry that we could get into in the future. So we redesigned that whole area too. So then um, that was in, that was through 2020 and then COVID started to go away. So um, we launched our campaign in November of 2021. 20, um, we launched our stewardship campaign, and you guys, you know that you know that story, right? I mean, we 
you know, uh, we projected maybe a million and a half, right? You gave three million, right? Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. When we, going back to January of 2019, to we had, I think, 800,000 in the bank and we were spending what we brought in. There's not a chance in the world we could have did these projects. Fast forward to today, and we're going to build this facility, right? That, it's, it's another, uh, just a miracle, just a miracle. So if you go to the next slide. So um, January of 2022, we started working with Martinson and Isley. You, how many times did I talk to you guys about this, right? Wetlands and stormwater management and all the issues we ran into. And I was just talking to Devin here with Excel. They got in after we kind of hit a road, all the roadblocks. They helped us. And another miracle, all of a sudden, we didn't have to do stormwater ponds. We got all kinds of approvals from the city. Everything started. You remember how much you prayed for that? Miracles just happened. Um, so we, um, in March of 2023, we, we had already been working with Excel on the stormwater and the wetland stuff. And we put out a RFP, a request for proposal to, I think, seven architects and Excel won the project. And we started working with Excel on our building and they've been amazing to work with. Just absolutely a great architectural firm. And what they've done, yeah, give, give them a hand. That they, they have been incredible. In March of 2024, we put the project out for bids. You want to know a secret? You guys, all right. I'm going to say this a little quiet. We didn't really believe it was going to come back in budget, right? We didn't think we were going to be able to do it. So, and you guys prayed. How many times did I ask you to pray about that, right? Here we are. Uh, another miracle. Uh, like, and I'm just hitting some of, the, some of the unbelievable miracles. There's been so many. Okay, so um, it went out for bids then in... March of 2024 and Catalyst. Again, Catalyst has been working with us throughout this whole design process even before that. Again, why don't you give them a hand? They've been amazing, <laughs> just absolutely amazing to work with. And, um, and a lot of the work that we did through the design process helped us to get this project you know, in budget. We did a lot of value engineering through it and everything. Even the whole worship center redesign, just some incredible things. And so here we are today, um, June 2024. And again, I, like Pastor said, I'm kind of pinching myself too. I, it's hard to believe we're here, going to go out to the land, we're going to put shovels in the ground. And the projection right now from Catalyst is July 9th to be equipment moving dirt, starting the groundbreaking July 9th. <laughs> All right, next slide. Okay. Now, this is the really exciting part, because that's what's happened. That's where we got to today. This is moving forward. Thought you'd like to just kind of get a feel. This is projected. It's going to change and evolve as we move forward. This was given to us at Catalyst in their bid um, project timeline. But just to give you a feel and an idea how this project's going to go. So in July, we're going to be site grading, doing site prep, put in the utilities, underground utilities um, to the project. That's happening in July. Perfect timing perfect timing, right, because our site has potentially can hold water. The soils are heavy clays that can hold water, and so the most optimal time to be doing this work is in July and August, right? So how did, I mean, you know how many delays there were, and, and things got behind, and here we are starting on July, potentially on July 9th, right? Okay, August, um, concrete, the um, concrete panels are going up, walls and shafts, structural steel, they're going to start erecting the building in August. In October, exterior metal, stud framing, waterproofing, roofing. So the exterior of the building is going to get all stud framed up, waterproofing, the roof's going to start to go on. We're just in October here. In November, underground, uh, under slab rough-ins, before they pour the slab in the building, all the concrete, they got to put in underground plumbing, any kind of electric, any kind of things we got to put in under the slab, and masonry on the outside of the building. This is in November. In December, we're talking about potentially putting the rest of the siding on the building, um, glass and glazing, all the glass in the building, and metal decking on the roof. So do you know what that means? That means 
we've got the building enclosed to be working through the winter. Again, the schedule on this, that's just phenomenal, right? If we're doing the earthwork in July, because we wouldn't want to be doing the earthwork in March. It's too wet. You know, we'd have way more cost in the earthwork and doing it in March than in July. That can minimize the risk to the project. And then to have the building enclosed before winter, again, minimizes winter overruns, lets us work through the winter. It's just, it's just incredible. So the first quarter, I, I'm sorry I'm going back and forth here, but I, I can't see that. So um, the first quarter of 2025, the interior wall framing, the MEP rough ends, drywall and painting. So, and I know we're gonna be doing a lot of work in that, so you can kind of get an idea. This is when a lot of our volunteer work's gonna, there's gonna be stuff to do before that. Cleaning, we're gonna do some site um, landscaping and stuff as a church, but this is where we'll be starting to bring our volunteer effort into it, first quarter. Second quarter of 2025, elevator, ceiling grids, and MEPs. Again, you guys all know, see, how many of you knew what an MEP was before this started? Uh, it's gonna be a handful of hands, right? Now how many people know what MEPs are, right? Well, well <laughs> more anyways, right? So mechanical, electric, plumbing. That's the, all the, um, the HVAC systems, the heating, cooling, electric, and plumbing. That's all gonna get finished up in that second quarter. Third quarter, the stairs, the railings, the drop ceiling tile, doors, the, the worship center seating, AVL installation, bathroom accessories, all the fin finished final work in that third quarter. And then the fourth quarter, which is ex really exciting, right? Of, so we're talking between like September, October, and December of next year, you'll be sitting and we'll be worshiping in the new building, substantial completion. So. Is that exciting? So again, this is um, this is some. It's together we build, right? Is our that's our it was together campaign when we started, and now it's together we build. So everything that we've done, we've done. We are where we are today, right now. We're in a very very exciting place. This next year and a half is the together we build part of it, right? Where where now it's. It's um, hand in hand, side by side. We're all gonna join forces and put everything we can. I mean, that's a short period of time, right? A year and a half, like, it's really long if you're like 12 or 14 years old, right? But when you start to get like 40, 50, 60, a year and a half, it's like, oh yeah, I, I could go to jail for a year and a half and like, <laughs> you know, I'd be okay, right? If you think about when you're 17, like, that's the rest of my life, right? You know, I get, you know, I can't do that. But I, I don't plan on going. I, uh, yeah, <laughs> I didn't even speed on the way. I didn't speed too much on the way here. So, but a year and a half, crazy, right? So th this is our time. This is our time. Together we build, right? All right, Pastor Soto, um, he's somewhere. Awesome, Sam. Thank you. How many of you appreciate Brother Sam? To our guests who are here today, thank you for worshiping with us. You should have received This Is ATC, a, a Connect card as you came in today. If you would like to know more about our church, get connected, simply scan the QR code and select the area of ministry of interest, and a member of our pastoral team will be in contact with you. We're delighted that you are worshiping with us today. And also, we are very honored to have representatives from Catalyst Construction and also Excel uh, Engineering. We appreciate them being here today. Just so you know, this auditorium is flanked by restrooms, uh, restrooms to my right and to my left. Uh, you should be aware of that. And also, just in case I forget, I do want you to know that uh, you should use the restrooms here before you go to the property. We don't have any restrooms at the property. And so take care of business before you go. I have three reflections today at this milestone moment for Apostolic Truth Church that I would like to share with you, and I will do my very best to abbreviate my reflections. My first reflection is this, that Jesus Christ is everything. The principal purpose for today is not to glorify a building, 
but to glorify Jesus Christ. He created us. He redeemed us. He brought us together. We have been placed in this body of believers by his spirit. And the reason we are here is Jesus Christ. The reason we're a church in Appleton, Wisconsin is Jesus Christ. And the purpose of our church is Jesus Christ. Our mission is very simple. We want people to know Jesus Christ, to grow in Jesus Christ, and to show the love of Jesus Christ. To use the words of the Apostle Paul, Jesus Christ is our all in all. And the church, this body of believers, the ecclesia, could not survive without Jesus. Buddhism survived the loss of Buddha. Confucianism survived the departure of Confucius. Muhammad is dead, but the Islamic faith is alive. But ATC could not survive without a risen Savior, Jesus Christ. We are completely dependent upon our ascended and seated Lord, the one who was, is, and is to come. Jesus Christ was the message of the prophets of old. They prophesied 300 uh, prophecies regarding Jesus. Jesus Christ was the focus of the church age. When Peter preached about Jesus, men repented and were filled with the Spirit on the inaugural day of the church. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2 and 2, For I am determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. He said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 5, For we do not preach ourselves but Christ Jesus the Lord. Jesus is everything and his mission is everything to us. Jesus gave what is called the Great Commission in Mark verse, uh, chapter 16 and verse 15 when he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Jesus said, preach the gospel. The gospel is the good news that Jesus Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again on the third day. We, through f belief and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, can obey the gospel by repenting of our sins, by being buried in the waters of baptism in his great name. We can receive the resurrection power of God's spirit through his Holy Spirit. And so we are commanded as a church to preach Jesus, to preach the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. We exist to declare the gospel. As a church, we've determined the great commission this great commission to preach the gospel will not be the great omission of Apostolic Truth Church. Outreach is not the ministry of a choice few hyperactive churches. Outreach is the purpose of the church. I said outreach is the purpose of the church. That's why we're doing what we're doing. If we do not actively work to evangelize our world, then we have forfeited our purpose as a church. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. And so today is not about a building. It's about Jesus. And the church said, amen. My second reflection is this. I'm grateful. Most of us have heard or read of the building of Solomon's temple. It was the most magnificent edifice from the exterior to the interior ever built by Israel unto the Lord. Several chapters of the Bible detail the planning, preparation, process of erecting that sacred structure. The Bible even goes so far as to describe the wealth of materials used within and without that place. One of the most powerful stories of the Bible is that of the dedication of that temple. It was an occasion that defies description. When God's glory, the Bible says, hung so thick, so gloriously that the priest could not even physically stand to minister. And I want you to know that although we refer to this temple as Solomon's temple, King David's, Solomon's father was actually the one who was the most deserving of the credit for that house, considering that of the 1,017,000 talents of silver given to build the temple, David gave 1 million of those talents. Of the 108,000 talents of gold given, 100,000 talents of that gold were given from David's storehouse. The staggering amount of silver and gold required to build a house of worship came from David, Solomon's father. In addition to the gold and silver, David stockpiled the raw material needed for the task. He brought the cedars from Lebanon 
and the stone from the quarries. When you press on a few chapters, David is in the grave, and his son Solomon is king, and Solomon built the temple from David's stockpiles. And when it was erected, it seems that it was the smoothest building program in history because the Bible declares in 1 Kings chapter 6 and verse 7, and the temple when it was being built was built with stone finished at the quarry so that no hammer or chisel or any iron tool was heard in the temple while it was being built. So everything just fell into place. I would submit to you that when things just fall into place, it's not because it's easy to do. It's because someone in the past was planning and preparing. Church family, someone was preparing in the past. And I am grateful for the founding pastor of this church, Pastor Michael Smaltz, who prepared ATC for this day. We're glad to have you here, Penny. That great man and his family planted the church here in the Fox Valley in 1983. That first solitary service in Floyd and Joan Vandening's basement years ago set in motion and broken succession of services these 41 years. Pastor Smaltz is no longer with us, but one day on the other side of eternity, a great multitude of people from the Fox Valley will cast their crowns at Jesus' feet alongside Pastor Michael Schmaltz. People he never knew, people he never preached to, but people he prepared for. We honor the memory of Pastor Michael Schmaltz. grateful. I'm grateful for Pastor Schmaltz. And I'm grateful for the generations of believers who made this day possible. 30 years ago, Pastor Schmaltz asked ATC members to give so we could build on this property today. 30 years ago. Think about that. Did you know that Pastor Schmaltz was always a step ahead? If you ever played rook with him, you knew that. That man was always a step ahead. And I'm so thankful that he was thinking ahead for us. Pastor Michael Schmaltz named the road. Our property is located on Rory Lane. It was his vision to build there. And so we're thankful for him, and we're thankful for the generation of believers who made this day possible. Their giving made this day possible. If you gave to help us buy the Glory Lane property, I want you to stand. Would you please stand if you gave to help us buy the Glory Lane property? property. Can we honor these people who helped us buy that property? Thank you. Thank you for helping us buy that property. We honor you. We thank you. We salute you. We bless you in the name of Jesus. We are indebted to you and we're grateful for your sacrifice. I am grateful. I'm grateful for this present generation. Your giving story is already a highlight story in the history of ATC, and Brother Sam alluded to it, and because of the sake of time, I'm not going to retell the story, but look what the Lord has done. I asked this church, will you help us? Can you give us $1.5 million? And you gave us like $3.3 million. Now that's a church that preachers dream about. And I salute you, and I honor you, and I thank you. And if the Lord tarries, they will be talking about this generation who helped us to make this move in this critical moment. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for you. And my third and final reflection, here it is. The building is important, but not most important. I've heard the stories of churches that worked hard to get into a new home, and when it was finished, they acted as if their mission was accomplished. I've heard of churches that moved into a new building but didn't bring the power of their worship with them. I have had pastors tell me it took them one year to get their worship back. Because for one year, people sat in a new sanctuary and just looked around. That is not my plan. 
That should not be our plan. Your worship's more important than a building. Jesus is more important than a building. A mission. Yes. Our building, our mission is not a building. Our mission is people. I said our mission is people. Jesus didn't die for brick and mortar. He died for souls. And when we get into our new church home, you'll be hearing this over this next year, so you, you can just take that to the bank. When we get to our new church home, our mission will have just begun. We are building this church for 500 of our newest friends and more. I believe it. I'm standing on it. I'm claiming it in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not make an idol out of our new church home. We are building because our present church home is limiting our mission, and limiting our mission is unacceptable. A new church home will accelerate our mission. The warmth and beauty of our new church home is, is not for self-aggrandizing. It's not to say, look at us. It's meant to be a welcoming mat to people who don't know Jesus Christ. I've had a few people say, that doesn't look like a traditional church. That's because it wasn't designed for church people. It was designed for people who don't go to church. We designed a, that building for people who don't go to church. Amen? Yes, it's a beautiful building. It's a great building. But our God is greater, and our designs for people are greater than our designs for that building. And the church said amen. I think I'm just going to cut my remarks right there. Would you please stand with me? We are preparing to do something historic, something that at times we felt might never happen. And we give glory to God that he has made this day possible for us. And we are reminded, we are reminded That it's not the house, it's the God of the house. It's his mission, it's his purpose, and it's people. That's the reason why we're doing what we are doing. Jesus cleansed the temple. Many of you would know that story. He threw the money changers out. And the Bible says in John chapter 2, verse 17, then his disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house has eaten me up. Wow, Jesus had a zeal for his house. He cared about what went into his house. He cared about what happened in his house. These are the things that matter to us. What Jesus, what do you think about all this? And I will echo those words too. That the zeal for your house has eaten me up. I'm excited about it. I'm thankful about it, but I know what it's about. And we're not going to lose sight of that. And the church said, amen. Lord Jesus, we love you and we praise you. It's a special moment. We will not have a moment like this again, Lord, if you tarry. Our future is on Glory Lane, and we are preparing to make a short journey there to begin the work. And we thank you, Lord, for the work that has been done to bring us to this day. We thank you for the legacy leadership of Pastor Michael Schmaltz, for the legacy sacrifice of generations of members gone by and today. We ask in your precious name that you will help us to remember that that building is important, but not what is most important pray that we would fill that house for your glory. And the church said amen. We're going to have a closing song, and then I have some remarks that I want to share with you. And every season And I'm believing the best is yet to come. 
the cross before me, my hope of things above. It's in you, Jesus. It's in you, Jesus. The best is yet to come. Ooh, your presence is for your presence. spaces for our guardians, so please be mindful of that, and again, please stop by the restroom before you leave, and we do have um, some refreshments, and we do have some waters if you need it. We will not be long on the property, and one of the very first things that we're going to do is we're going to have a full crowd drone shot, and so we need you to get to the property, and let's get ready to break ground in Jesus' name. God bless you.